Hello everyone, my name is Jess. Today I will introduce you to the ORNL DAC and demonstrate some of the ways our data have been made easy. The Oak Ridge National Laboratory Distributed Active Archive Center is NASA's primary repository for data related to terrestrial biogeochemistry and ecological dynamics. The ORNL DAC integrated web application hosts over 1,400 data sets and serves over 30,000 users per year. All data sets are categorized by one or more science theme, which you see listed in the image. These themes were selected to make data discovery easy for ecologists. The terrestrial biogeochemistry and ecology domain is diverse. As the NASA Active Archive that supports this domain, the ORNL DAC holds a diverse collection of data that range the ecological research topics shown here. To make data easier for researchers to get, we have developed tools and services for accessing data we hold, plus some related data archived by other DACs. The quickest way to access ORNL DAC data is to use the search bar at the top of the home page. You can also find ORNL DAC data through Earth Data Search, as Cindy described earlier. Another way to find data is through the Get Data option on the menu bar, which allows you to browse data by science theme or NASA project. On the left, you see the NASA Project tab found on the Get Data page. Each science theme and project has a landing page that lists respective data. On the right, you see the landing page of the Arctic Boreal Vulnerability Experiment. Each dataset also has a landing page. On the left, you see the top of a dataset landing page, and on the right, you see a table of data files found near the bottom of the landing page. Notice that there is a filter for the list of files that you can use to search for data within the dataset. You can download the data directly from the landing page as individual files or as data bundles. But many of you might not want to download a full dataset or even the full temporal or spatial extent of a single data file. That's why we have developed tools to minimize the time you spend getting the data you actually want. Imagine you need a data set representing abiotic factors at your field site. Our DayMet holdings contain daily, monthly, and annual weather summaries on a one kilometer grid for all of North America from 1980 through 2019. But you don't need data for all of North America, or maybe you want to see what the data look like before you download. For daily DayMet data, the single pixel extraction tool can help. Here you will see a demo of the tool's basic functions. This is the single pixel tool's user interface that allows you to download DayMet data for a single location. I have just selected a pixel on the map, now I select a temporal span, and I choose to get all the weather variables available. Note that once you enter your query, the tool provides scripting commands that can be used to automate the query for multiple locations using the web service. To learn how to do this, select the automate link near the bottom of the window. Now, I'll preview the data, which is provided in a table. And next, I'll visualize the data. Here you see graphs of each data variable. If you want, you can view individual points on the graph and even change the plot settings. And that is how you visualize DayMet daily weather data for the year 1986. Also for DayMet, there's an option to visualize and download monthly and annual data. Just use the Spatial Data Access Tool, or SDAT for short. SDAT is a standards-based web service that allows you to visualize, subset, regrid, reformat, and reproject gridded and point data all from your web browser. Here you will see a demonstration of SDAT using a recently published biomass dataset. Notice that you can filter datasets available in SDAT. I select the dataset for global biomass for 2010 and I'm redirected to a web application that loads the dataset's layers. I choose the layer for below ground biomass and then I scroll down to see other options. The data are provided in WGS84 format, but I reproject the data into the Google projection. The variety of base maps depends on your projection. Here you see me select a different base map, and then I decrease the opacity of the data layer so that I can see the base map's labels. 
Next, I zoom into the map to get a closer look at Europe. Next, I use the subset tool to draw a rectangle that selects data collected for Denmark only. Now I choose to export the data values as integers and in the GeoTIFF format. And now you know how to reproject and reformat gridded data using SDAT. You just saw an example of how to customize a single gridded data set for global biomass. But what if you're interested in more than one data set with different types of data? In the case of soil, we have developed a tool to make getting data easier. The Soil Moisture Visualizer harmonizes data from multiple sources to have the same temporal and spatial scales so that the data are analysis ready. The data includes soil moisture from 12 different sources, plus related data like evapotranspiration and net ecosystem exchange. Now you will see a demo of how to get harmonized soil data and see the data graphed. You can begin by selecting a data set of interest and then a location related to that data set. Here I select the Tonzi Ranch site located in California. I zoom out of the map to get a wider view of the data available for the region. Now I scroll down to view the graph of the data that corresponds to the map above. By hovering over the graph, you can see individual values in the pane to the right. Here I select and I deselect data that will be plotted in the graph. Then I select a shorter temporal extent for the graph. Now I scroll down to view options for downloading the data. And that's how easy it is to get harmonized soil data using the Soil Moisture Visualizer. Some of you probably do research at a flux tower site or at a long established field site. The fixed site subsets tool will make getting satellite remote sensing data for your site a lot easier. This tool provides pre-made subsets of key MODIS and VIRS land products for over 3,000 ecological research sites around the world and from over 50 networks including Ameriflux and NEON. The fixed sites tool is just one example of our subsetting and visualization services designed to make getting valuable remote sensing data a bit easier for ecologists. In this demo, you will see an example of how to visualize and download remote sensing data for a NEON site using the fixed site subsets tool. I begin by filtering the data by network and I am provided a list of the 51 networks available. I select NEON and now there are orange points on the map that designate NEON sites. I click on a point in a region of interest and a box pops up giving me information about that site and the networks located there. Now I view the listing of available data products and I choose my favorite one, MODIS Terra Vegetation Indices. Here you see descriptions of the data bands and formats available for download. I scroll down to see a time series view of the NDVI data and I stack the data by year. By hovering over the data points, I can see the values of each. As I scroll down, you can see a similar plot for EVI data, gridded views of each type of data, and a map of land cover classification. Also for this data product, I can view a phenology time series. Now I return to the top of the page. Here you can see that we format a citation specifically for your query and even provide you data quality information. If your research site isn't one included in the Fixed Sites tool, we also offer the Global Subsets tool for remote sensing land products. The ORNL DAC offers other helpful tools and services for ecologists that I won't demo in this presentation, but here is a list of a few that might interest you. For example, we recently released the Airborne Data Visualizer for greenhouse gas data collected during the Act America campaigns. You don't have to learn about what ORNL DAC has to offer on your own. Our learning resources page provides links to tutorials and help pages for working with our data, tools, and services. From the page, you can filter by the type of resource you want, like a tutorial or webinar. You can also filter by keywords. For instance, maybe you want only resources related to DayMet or coded in Python. If you get confused by any data, can't find what you're looking for, or have suggestions for us, you can contact our user services office using the email address above or by selecting the contact button across our website.